Physicians for Social Responsibility sponsored a touring presentation on nuclear proliferation, specifically in reference to a treaty that President Obama will be signing, the future elimination of strategic offensive arms. In Portland, the presentation was given at the Wish Camper Center. The whole purpose of the presentation is to educate people about the effects of a nuclear attack, which basically would be the total destruction of the planet, even with a small nuclear attack. Dr. Ira Helfand, MD, is the co-founder and past president of Physicians for Social Responsibility and currently serves on PSR's board of directors. A bomb the size of the one that, that it destroyed Hiroshima, which could be made by terrorists, if brought into the port there on a, on a container ship and detonated before the ship actually docked, so that most of the explosion took place out over the river, would nonetheless kill something in the order of 50,000 people promptly from the explosion and the firestorm that it created. An additional 10,000 people would be exposed to a lethal dose of radiation emanating directly from the explosion. In addition, radioactive fallout would be generated, which would spread over the New York metropolitan area, exposing another million and a half people to radiation. And of those, about 200,000 would be exposed to lethal doses of radiation if they were not promptly evacuated or sheltered from this uh, radioactive cloud. So the death toll from this one small bomb detonated out over the water could be as high as a quarter of a million people. And a modern attack on, say, New York, which is the example I will use, would involve not one 20 megaton bomb, but perhaps 15 or 20 half megaton or quarter megaton bombs. The total megatonnage would be somewhat less than in the scenario I'm going to use. The destruction would actually be much greater because the destruction would be spread out more efficiently over the entire metropolitan area. But it's very hard to describe to you 15 or 20 bombs going off all, all, all at the same time. And so the model of one 20 megaton bomb, although it underestimates the destruction, I think serves as an adequate approximation. 32 miles across, covering over 800 square miles. Within this entire area, the temperature would rise to greater than 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit, and every living thing would die. All the oxygen would be consumed. Everyone, everything would die. Beyond this, the destruction would continue. Out to 20 miles, people standing outside on a nice day would have all of their exposed skin subject to second and third degree burns. To a distance of 40 miles in every direction, anyone who turned reflexly to look at the sudden flash of light would be blinded by retinal burns. And in the New York metropolitan area, in the first half hour, something on the order of 10 to 15 million people would die. The speakers emphasized the importance of contacting Senator Snow and Collins to urge them to support the ratification of this treaty. Colonel Richard Class currently serves as executive director for the Veterans Alliance for Security and Democracy. All of this is designed to have a more stable, more transparent, um, more routine uh, interchange with Russia on the issue of strategic nuclear weapons so that if there is another incident, uh, the incident where some of my Air Force uh, colleagues accidentally flew a B-52 with six nuclear-armed air launch cruise missiles from Minot, North Dakota to Eglin Air Force Base, Louisiana, and didn't know they had nuclear warheads on them. Um, which caused the Secretary of the Air Force and the Chief of Staff of the Air Force to be fired. What if one of those fell off? So if we can get this relationship stable, we can start building down to lower numbers. We can start working together uh, to help secure nuclear materials, which we been, have been doing under the Cooperative Threat Reduction Agreement for the last 15 years. And we can start working on getting other countries to reduce uh, their stockpiles of nuclear weapons to keep their nuclear materials, weapons and other nuclear materials, more secure, and then to work on getting the comprehensive test ban treaty through. Today, nuclear terrorism is America's greatest security threat, not in nuclear Russia and the United States. Nuclear weapons do not deter terrorists. For Community Update, I'm Bill Blood.